Hey, Vision Chasers, this is Dr. Bird here. You know, the history of Chinese immigration to the United States is filled with many sad chapters of discrimination and violence. And I'm going to talk about one of those sad chapters today. Chinese immigrants played an important role in completing the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. They worked for less pay, they did a lot of the dangerous tasks, and they worked very, very hard in order to complete this railroad. And sadly, when the railroad was finished, they were not invited to the celebration. But many Chinese workers decided to stay in the United States even after the railroad was complete. And many of them moved to other parts of the countries and took other jobs. This would end up causing problems for many of the white citizens in the United States because there wasn't an infinite amount of jobs to go around and Chinese workers were willing uh, to, to work for less money. And so therefore, many employers decided to, to go with the Chinese laborers. In 1882, Congress passed and the president signed a law restricting uh, Chinese laborers from coming into the United States. That was the Chinese Exclusion Act. And so this law was passed to alleviate some of those concerns and really restrict the violence because things were starting to turn violent because of the resentment towards these Chinese workers. A perfect example of this resentment towards Chinese workers took place in 1885. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Rock Springs Massacre. In the mid to late 1800s, workers were starting to speak with one voice and, and unite in pursuit of better working conditions, better pay, better hours, and an overall better way of life for them and their family. This time period was known as the Gilded Age, and, and it was called the Gilded Age because it looked like there was prosperity all around for everyone to enjoy. But when you really looked at it, you would discover there, there was a lot of poverty being concealed by that prosperity or the, the perception of prosperity all around. And so the situation was like this. Basically, if you were born poor, then that was pretty much going to be your existence the rest of your life. There were very few opportunities for people who were poor to work themselves out of that situation. And so you can understand that there would be some frustration on the part of those individuals and because they didn't have the power to better their situation they had to find someone to take it out on and that's where chinese immigrants and other immigrants as well come into play the frustrations that were felt by many of the white citizens in the united states were taken out on immigrants and, and sadly, these workers would turn to violence to express their frustration. So the Union Pacific, which is a railroad, they owned, a, they owned and operated a coal mine in Rock Springs, Wyoming. And this workplace, like many workplaces around the country at this time, was filled with labor issues. The white workers wanted to be paid more. Um, the Chinese workers were not complaining, even though they were being paid less. And so the white workers understood that even if they were to go on strike to protest and seek a, a wage increase, they knew that their protests wouldn't be heard and their demands wouldn't be met because their employer could simply go out and hire some more Chinese workers for less. So ultimately, the white workers came to the conclusion that the answer was to eliminate all Chinese workers so that the white workers were the only option for their employer to hire. So let's set the stage. The day is September 2nd, 1885. Remember, there's been a lot of tension in this, uh, in this workplace at this coal mine. And we have white workers and we have Chinese workers and they, they live in different areas. It's segregated. So on that morning, there was a fight between white workers and Chinese workers resulting in the death of a Chinese worker. Later in the day, there's a group of uh, between 100 and 150 workers making their way towards what was called Chinatown. That's simply where the Chinese workers uh, were, were living 
when they weren't working in the mines. So this group of white workers, they're, as they're marching towards Chinatown, they're, they're assaulting Chinese workers, they're robbing them. And so there was also some coordination within this attack on the Chinese workers. After this horrific incident, one of the Chinese workers, his name was Yu Kuang, he was interviewed. And so I'm going to read to you a little bit of the text from this actual interview. These are Yu Kuang's actual words. This is what he saw on that day. A little past three o'clock, I saw a number of white men armed with rifles coming from different directions towards the Chinese buildings and commenced firing at these Chinese. And then the Chinamen ran in every direction. And after that, I saw them set fire on the buildings. The Chinamen were so frightened at that time that they ran away in all directions. I also ran too, but I know almost none of them took anything with them when they ran away because they had not time to take anything with them. And they left everything in the buildings. I believe there was a great loss of property and money. After I came back in a few days, I saw a number of dead bodies of Chinamen. So Mr. Kwong, along with a number of other survivors, would end up running towards the hills and, and, and tall grass and just basically running for their lives for a number of days before the United States military would come in and restore order. Now, these surviving Chinese workers, they many of them had had enough. They they were scared and they did not want to return to the mine for un, unfortunately, they were misled, tricked, if you will, into returning back to the mines. And when they returned back to the work site, uh, the the site that they saw was uh, was very horrific. In all, 28 Chinese workers were killed and these Chinese workers saw the, the decomposing bodies of their um, friends and family members. They also saw that many of their possessions were burned to the ground. And as Mr. Kwong said, he didn't have time to go back to his home to retrieve any of his, uh, his possessions and he didn't have his money on him. And so in many instances before these buildings were burned, they were looted. So imagine this, these workers are scared. They really, they, they're, they're frightened. They really don't want to work at this site anymore. And many of them want to just go back to California, but they are refused uh, any assistance by their employer. They are forced to live in boxcars because their homes have been destroyed. Their employer refuses to sell them food unless they get back to work. And so by September 21st, order was pretty much restored. There were some Chinese workers who decided that they had enough that they were going to leave, but the rest ultimately uh, gave in and decided to go back to work. In terms of justice, there was no justice. 16 white workers were arrested and, and soon they were released, but ultimately nothing happened to them because there were no witnesses who were willing to come forward and speak out against them. And mind you, this, all of this happened in broad daylight. And so there were there would be no one who was held accountable for the death deaths of these 28 workers and about 15 who were wounded. And then the, the loss of property totaling about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So in the end, order is finally restored. There is no justice. Uh, and of course, money can't bring those 28 people back to life. But later down the road, there's going to be some back and forth. And ultimately, there is going to be some monetary uh, restitution for these Chinese workers. Now, sadly, it's concluded that the Union Pacific, the owner of the mine, 
quickly restored order or the status quo because they wanted this cheap labor. They wanted the Chinese workers there because they were a, they were willing to work for less. And as a result, this was the Union Pacific's way of quieting the, the demands of those white workers who wanted more in terms of wages. And sadly, these Chinese workers are right there in the middle and they uh, felt the wrath and, and the resentment of the white workers. So there you have it. That's just a little bit about the Rock Springs Massacre of 1885. There is so much more to it. I encourage you to look that up. Additionally, there's a worksheet that goes along with this video. Just look in the description section to find out how to get that. Also, please don't forget to help us as we are looking to relaunch the Vision Chasers website. There's something that you can do in the description section as well to help us do that. But I thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.